enough said, but this rivalry has been one-sided this season with Ohio State winning all four regular season matchups decisively. But now it comes down to one game for a chance to play in a championship matchup next week. Michigan hoping the fifth meeting is finally the charm. Nationwide arena down to four teams remaining in the Big Ten tournament. It's Michigan coming off of a sweep over Wisconsin. Ohio State also breezed by Michigan State as they'll play the winner of the other semifinal matchup between Penn State and Notre Dame. Always great to be paired up with Ben Clymer. I'm Dan Kelly. Welcome inside Nationwide Arena. It's playoff hockey, so oftentimes goaltending decides games. So considering that, advantage Ohio State and Sean Romeo. Well, Sean Romeo has been the difference when these two teams have played. He's been sparkling. 95 save percentage. Very comfortable against Mel Pearson's team. If I'm Steve Rollick, we just continue to preach playing as five because that sixth player has been awfully solid. Well, big pressure and big expectations on the leading point producer for Michigan, Cooper Marodi. He's going to have to be big tonight. Well, he certainly will. Over half his points have come this year with the increased amount of responsibility Mel Pearson has given him. But he'll have to play a 200-foot game. The lone upperclassman at the center ice position for the Michigan Wolverines is going to have to come back, play a heavy game down low against players like Mason Yaps, Speedway Indiana native. In my opinion, the shiftiest player in all the Big Ten. He starts spitting offense awfully difficult to contain. This Michigan team, much like Minnesota, they are dangerous off the rush. Well, they certainly have speed. Tony Calderon is going to be a player they watch on the wall. Josh Norris, the freshman, unbelievable. Slaker will be motoring as well, and well, that will be a trend that will continue to the back end. Quinn Hughes, the most exciting defenseman, in my opinion, in the Big Ten. The freshman taking huge ownership of that puck for the Wolverines, and for Steve Rollock's group, the sophomore Tanner Lazinski has taken a step that puts him in jeopardy of maybe leaving campus a year early, but he will certainly ride shotgun on that right wing position, the first line. Very dangerous offensively, and Wyatt Eggie and Sasha LaRock will be the shutdown pair. They're going to have to be on the ice a lot because they're not going to have last change here against the Wolverines. Take a look at the tournament bracket just underway in the third period between Penn State and Notre Dame, the winner of this up in the championship next Saturday as we send you to ice level. We ask that you please remain standing for the playing of our national anthem, performed by the Ohio State University String Athletic Band under the direction of Joe Carr. Almost ready for opening face-off between Ohio State and Michigan in the semifinal matchup. And Mel Pearson's Michigan Wolverines, they've struggled mightily this year versus Ohio State, losing all four games decisively. So they've been playing their best hockey, though, here down the backstretch. Ohio State, really since the holiday break, they've been rolling as well. Both these teams in fine form, but the Michigan power play starting to find its way. That will be very important this season. It has struggled under 20%, not the case in recent games. It's a little different venue. 
Nationwide Arena, the home of the Columbus Blue Jackets, the home barn for the Buckeyes this evening, and they've done well here over the years. 18 years at Nationwide Arena, and Sean Pino, he has been the big He's so calm and cool, no extra movement, his routine, his focus. His head coach, Steve Rollick, is amazed. Hayden Levine, Michigan, they've been allowing a lot. Good. They've been scoring. So we wonder, will we scoring playoff tilt tonight or one of those 7-5 Michigan-Ohio State matches back in yesteryear? Thanks for the they would checking game, try to win a game on, like that. On the other side, Mel Pearson would like to open this up the way he played last weekend. The vast difference with the number of goals being scored by the Wolverines and also the number of goals, unfortunately, going behind their net line. There's one of the big rocks back there, Sasha LaRock. This is a group that's not necessarily flashy, but very mobile, and it all starts with the clean exits and the clean breakouts for Ohio State. Mobile, but one other thing, Dan, very committed. That team and that group of defensemen will play very sound defensive play. They will keep saves needed by Sean Romeo to the exterior. Cooper Marodi there forced out wide. That's off a stick and out of play, just 10 seconds in. Good to see the third member of our broadcast team down between the benches, Mr. Fred Fletch. Well, a bit of a mutual operation society between these two coaches this week. Steve Rollick saying what concerns him about Michigan? Well, other than the fact they're playing the best of any team in the nation right now, have 10 NHL picks, 10 players from the NTDP. Not much. Mel Pearson says, yeah, we don't belong on the same ice as these guys, but we only have to beat them once. So we'll see. Michigan hoping the fifth time is a charm here is Matthew Weiss. He's had a career year both on and off the ice. Number 16 for Ohio State. Dexter Danks will turn and fire it in. Wyatt Agee on the retrieval. Freddie Girard, what a breakthrough year number 15 has had for Ohio State. This is Luke Martin, though, recovering possession off the stick of LaRock, but still leaks into the zone. Josh Norris in front, but it ends up being a breakout pass for Ohio State as Weedle will send it in. Mason Yops cruising in there along with Kearney. Quick pace to begin this game. It's Romeo, watch it behind his goal, Gordy Meyer. Martin pinches in for Michigan. The hand pass is why we hear our second whistle of this young game. So far, Michigan using their speed, pushing in offensively, putting the Buckeye defense in a position where Steve Rollick has to be happy that his defense have been able to keep their gap up and yet provide some transition. He feels that his guys right now just expect to win. So confident, 23 wins on the season for Ohio State, their most since 2009. Meyer unable to stop the puck. Nicholas Boca passed you off. Boca has to back off because bearing down on him is Mason Yopst. Yopst and Storkin across the line offside. That would be a good trade there for Mel Pearson's Michigan Wolverines. Griffin Loose getting intertangled with the captain Mason Yobbs to 41 points on the year as a player that well, Mel Pearson would love to have off of the ice. Ohio State the only team in the conference that Michigan has not beat this year. Took a little while for the Wolverines to, to get rolling this year. First coaching change and 33 years as Mel Pearson takes over for the retired Red Berenson. So new system, new players, and now they're flying here at the end of the year as Pastyov will shoot it in. When Fred talked about the 10 NHL draft picks, Pastyov and also Quinn Hughes are draft eligible coming up. Those will be two players that certainly hear their name called. 
Luke Stork tries to angle his way in on Boca. He does so. Break there for the Wolverines. I thought Boca might draw the first minor penalty of the game. Boca here paired up with Luce. Luce first to it. Austin Cooley now, his first shift. He'll slide it in. Loose there. Was ready for the collision coming at him. Sasha LaRock, Mason Yops. Out of reach there for McCormick and Wyatt Agee back to collect it. Collected here, paired up with LaRock. McCormick at the end of a shift, so he'll just stash it in behind the goal and go to the bench for a change. Dakota Raby, he's scored now in consecutive weekends, and that's something that Michigan has been getting recently. Production from other than just their high-end guys. And it's Raby breaking away. Danks will shoot it in deeper. Gordy Meyer very... Elusive there on the pickup. Lazinski blindly right up the middle. That could be a problem. Michigan trying to hold it in. Good break for the Buckeyes there. You cannot expose that puck in the center area of the ice, let alone a blind one like you talked about. Turnovers, those are detrimental over the course of the season, but in a one-game series like this, oh so important. Choppy start to this game through the first four minutes. We check in with Fred Pletch. Well, Steve Rollick opting to dress seven defensemen tonight. A few reasons for that. Flu buck going through the team, so a couple of forwards not available. He gets a senior, Yannick Moser back. And Ben, as you know, in a one-game shot, it's not a best of three. If you've got nine forwards that are going, that might be all you need. Slaker with the try, now Slaker's dumped. Warren unable to get the shot away as Dakota Joshua holding him off. Stork and Joshua on the forecheck, but Joshua overskates it. A little dust up right in front of the Ohio State bench. And in there for a late little hit coming in was Jake Slaker. Past Yoff. Wades his way through center. Shovels it towards the goal. Romeo unable to contain it. But there to take it away, Mason Yops. Yops in Ohio State a little disorganized offside. Nice back check there by the Wolverines. Back through center ice trying to contain Mason Yops. Not allow him to use the full width of the ice. And the chippy play that we saw in front of the Buckeye bench with some physicalities continues. And there's a guy who's seen a game or two. Reminds me of what current head coach Mel Pearson said that Red now just looks all relaxed. He sits there, watches the game with his popcorn like he's spending an evening at the theater. Certainly a far different vantage point than he's had for many, many years in Ann Arbor. And Ooh, troublesome puck. Levine keeps it out with the pad save after initially almost kicking it into his own goal. Very fortunate that he didn't retract to the goal line and really extinguish that puck into his own net. Mason Yops spots John Wiedela at center. Kearney will drop it off, and Agee will push it in. So not a confident beginning for Hayden Levine. So Ohio State still looking for their first shot on goal. Looked like they got a little tap in there during that little indecision by Levine back there to play. It is Michigan. Off the boards, awaiting there is Raby. He'll swat it in. Joshua there. Knocks it off the stick of Raby, but the second wave, Miller tosses it in over the head. Getting the rebound there. Levine back in time to close things down. Great recognition by Matt Miller. He shoots that puck and realizes that he's going to be able to be the first four checker and can recover the puck, so he continues forward. Marodi, the low drive. Romeo is ready. 
Winding up there is Freddie Girard. Breaking away from Danks. Girard wouldn't settle down. Matthew Weiss back in front as Freddie Girard has been on a tear here in the second half. And confidence right now is a wonderful thing for him. A uh, wonderful thing. And I think he found a bit of miscommunication there by the Wolverines. He was in all by his lonesome behind the defenders. His line mate tried to thread that needle after that nice rush. This guy can thread the needle, but a few times now Ohio State has been offside. This time it's Tanner Lazinski carrying over the line. 13-22 to go in the first period. The Buckeyes still looking for their first shot on goal, but certainly a close call near Hayden Levine in the Michigan goal. DTN is brought to you by State Farm, here to help life go right. Take a look at tonight's State Farm State of Success as the Ohio State band on hand. And last year, Ohio State, a high-scoring team. They lose some offensive production defensively, though. Much more dialed in, especially the penalty-killing numbers have led the way for Ohio State. There's been two factors on that. Well, a new assistant coach has really taken ownership. And we also talked about Romeo. If your goaltender is solid, well, that penalty kill number is certainly going to creep up. Michigan, a lot of back pressure. They recover it. Josh Norris. He's been a different player since playing in the World Junior Tournament, number nine in maize and blue. But here comes Ohio State, led by Kearney. Three Wolverines back. Dropping to Wheedler. Swings wide on Warren. Dakota Joshua the drive. There's the first shot on goal. And the rebound tapped in. John Wheedle and Ohio State lead. They're calling this one back. Let's take another look as the entrance. And Kearney with just a wonderful drop. And Wheedler will be the player. He's going to lose his man behind the net. Jump out on that far side and prey on a rebound opportunity. A flurry of activity with Dakota Joshua arriving on the doorstep there. Levine's goal crease. Kearney in there. Are they going to say that Dakota Joshua was the guilty party? That infraction. It remains scoreless. Aggie Lazinski. That's ripped wide. All of a sudden now Ohio State looking more lively in the offensive zone. Yops' shot is blocked. Power play here for Ohio State. Buckeye power play that is had success over 23% of the time has its first opportunity. Fortunately for Mel Pearson, in the games, the four games these two teams have played, it has clicked at a 33% rate. Big factor there for the Wolverines is just simply you have to be disciplined. Don't give a power play that's had tremendous success against you opportunities. Short-handed Jake Slaker. Sends a bouncer wide of Romeo's goal. Just 50 seconds left in the power play for Ohio State. So far, nice job by the Wolverines of trying to clog things up through the neutral zone. When you have an opportunity, they've been able to clear it 200 feet. Gordy Meyer, he's the speedster back there. Number five, Miller on the point. Joyo. Blocked by Martin, kept in by Miller. Joyo's available straight away. Back to Miller, but not in the proper placement for him to release that one-timer. Joyo thought about it, now fires. Tipped by Wiedela. Getting a rebound try in front was Joshua. The, the Buckeyes really controlling the puck up high and take another look and see where we find the infraction that was it right there the Buckeyes are gonna find the puck somewhere through that all Hayden Levine touching the puck would be the Wolverine player to be able to find his team a whistle Just 
16 seconds of power play time left. Clean faceoff win by Weiss. Joyo the drive saved by Levine and it's cleared. Gordy Meyer, Girard, off the skate of Lazinski, Weiss in after their first, as Michigan has returned to full strength. Sealing the wall there is Girard, operating up front with Lazinski, Cooper, Marodi, Joshua had him lined up, but Marodi saw him coming. One of the Michigan players gave Dakota Joshua's stick a whack, he was pleading this case to the official in front of the Wolverine bench. Guy they say never cheats the company. Number 27 up front for Ohio State, Luke Stork. He's got the speed. Lampasso and Joshua, the other forwards on this line. Christian Lampasso lucky to not get some sort of infraction there as he went quasi knee on knee. Ooh, a turnover in Hughes. Save Sean Romeo. Freshman Ooh. defenseman with the breakaway. Just all of a sudden landed on his stick, and that's a dangerous guy, Quinn Hughes, to be bearing down on you. Joseph Ciccone. Hughes so calm with the puck. He's been just tremendous this year. So fun to watch, and not a big surprise to have a coach's child have that hockey IQ, but Michigan's really been fortunate with he and Norris. The freshmen have been very impressive. Bouncing on Kearney, Joyo risking things there to hold it in. Levine has it wrapped up for a faceoff. 9.16 to go in this first period. Quinn Hughes has to catch his breath. He was racing in on a breakaway, but Sean Romeo with the stop. Is this the overachiever semifinal? Michigan picked to finish seventh, Ohio State our sixth Ohio State fifth they're now the number two and three seeds which is why Steve Rollick and Mel Pearson are finalists for coach of the year honors in the Big Ten along with Jeff Jackson Penn State and Michigan State the only spots that were properly predicted Joyo has to back off a little bit and regroup he's under duress Calderon there hounding him great pressure but you have to make sure you don't Overly zealous can draw a power play opportunity. Jump puck there for Wiedela. Picking up the scraps as Yops with his centering attempt gobbled up by Brendan Warren on for Jake Slaker. He'll dump it in and try to chase it down, but Meyer first to it. Good communication in the breakout there. And look at Gordy Meyer gets right up the ice. Lazinski. It's a little help, but Michigan is still able to work their way across center. Their leading scorer, Marodi to Calderon, drives it wide. Calderon had Romeo shifting to his right. He tried to go high to the short side. There was availability there. Two dangerous fellows here, Marodi and Tony Calderon. Marodi does a nice job using speed to push the defense and the Buckeyes back in. That creates a sufficient amount of room that Calderon could walk in and you can see Romeo just cheating a bit. And Saturday will crown a champion in the championship game for the 2018 Big Ten Hockey Tournament. Right here on BTN, streaming live on BTN to go and Fox Sports go. These two teams awaiting the winner of Penn State and Notre Dame. That game is currently in the third period. Here's Luke Martin cutting down the lanes in the middle of the ice. Confident step up there. Michigan riding into the semifinals. Winners of seven straight, unbeaten in eight. Christian Lampasso, he's hit double digits in goal scoring this year, a career year for number 18. Yannick Moser. Plays it to the Michigan blue line where the Wolverines will cautiously take over as teams are changing. Josh Norris, as he's backing up now, skating forward once again. Ciccone swings it wide, 
Off the stick of Weedala, Quinn Hughes, the offensive defenseman, the fabulous freshman, the youngest guy in college hockey. Brendan Warren will pick it up. Slaker intended for Norris. He finally catches up to it. Good possession here by Michigan. Now they need to get some shots on target. Norris reaching for it. Mike Pastioff unable to hold in, but keeping possession for Michigan. Quinn Hughes spots the open ice. Hughes walks and fires off the inside of the goal post. Big break there for Romeo. Couldn't come out and challenge that shot because things were collapsing in front of him. Had to play deeper in his goal crease than he probably would have preferred. So a breakaway and a goal post so far for Quinn Hughes. Unbelievable how fun it is to watch Quinn Hughes and we talked about Michigan. There's another couple of teams that have had good freshmen. I thought the Badgers have a nice freshman class. Obviously, Minnesota with eighth overall pick. Casey Middlestad. Also, Scott Reedy. Awfully impressive pair. Of course, everybody wants to compare Quinn Hughes to Zach Wierenski, who's at this game tonight as he plays for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Wierenski more of a powerful skater, but they talk about the escapability of Quinn Hughes. Even at the next level, they're not going to be able to catch him. Well, he's slippery as can be, but he also has great offensive instincts and has a uh, disposition to play on the offensive side of the red line a bit more than Zach Wierenski did. Fred, you're down on the ice. What are you seeing? Well, I just, I talked to Quinn Hughes this week, and I asked him, you know, 30 NHL scouts at most of his games. Does that bother you? He said, to be honest, not really. It was much worse when I played in Toronto youth hockey. They'd be all in their black jackets really close to the ice. But he says, I'm just driven to be the best I can be. Scouts don't even realize they're there, to be honest, anymore. If there's only 30, what one's not there, I wonder? <laughs> He's projected to be a top 10 first rounder, Quinn Hughes, in this NHL draft and might have some family members to follow in coming years as well. With a reduced amount of obstruction in the National Hockey League, a player like Quinn Hughes, who years ago would have been undersized and they would have been worried about his ability to play strong down low, that is just simply not the case anymore. He's absolutely what teams would like to have. Higgy, Marodi pulls him down. Cooper Marodi will go off here for two minutes. Buckeyes, their second opportunity. Cooper Marodi off, so a double whammy against the Wolverines as one of their best players go off, and they will be without his ability to serve on their penalty kill, as you see Wyatt Eggy hit the ice. Flint Flon, Manitoba, Manitoba native, Mel Pearson. The shirt's unbuttoned. We uh, have officially loosened the tie. It's, it's on at this point. It's playoff hockey. Michigan and Ohio State. And this guy's been a big difference maker facing any Michigan team. Dakota Joshua, number eight. He parks himself in front of the goal. Power play underway here for Ohio State. Joya. Gordy Meyer. And one timer is blocked by Raby. Miller holding in. Goes for a little skate. Spreads things around to Meyer. Yannick Moser. Gordy Meyer. The one timer by Joyo. That's blocked in front by Piazza. Michigan desperately trying to clear. There to close things down, though, Dakota Joshua with a minute 18 left in this Ohio State power play. Joyo. Off a few skates, comes down for Joshua. Miller inching in. That doesn't get through as well. Minute to go in the power play. It's been in the zone the whole time. Meyer fires, scores! Power play goal deflected by Joshua in front. Either way, Ohio State leads. The sixth power play goal of the season series. I believe you're right, Dan. It will go to that net front presence. Dakota Joshua, who is in there paying the price. And see if we can't 
track that deflection, or it may have just been roofed to the far side. Tough to tell how rapidly that puck is moving, but a player like Dakota Joshua, you talked about it, Dan, is in front of the net, and that does two things. First off, obviously it's gonna take the eyes away from the goaltender, but the second thing is, it backs that goaltender deeper into his goal crease that he would prefer. That's going to increase the amount of net that a player has to shoot at based on angling. Looks like it may be Meyer's goal high to the far side there. His first of the season, and now, Ohio State, they've been so consistent on the power play over the last 18 games. They've scored a power play goal in 14 of them, including tonight. Oh. Well, the special teams have been extraordinary this year for Ohio State, and this is the time the special teams really come into play playoff hockey, and it allows them to open up the scoring here. Joshua with the screen. Cordy Meyer, he's all smiles with his first of the season. So now the Buckeyes. Six for 17 in this season series. And we talked about their penalty kill prowess. Perfect over the five games that they have played. And that's been a common trend against a lot of teams this year with their penalty kill clicking at over 90%. They lost Gust in Shilke, Ohio State. Begin the season, their power play was a little slow to develop, but in fine form now. Here, even strength, Mason Yops. Behind the play, it's Weedle and Norris tangled up. In the meantime, Ohio State keeping on the pressure. This Joya wants it. Shooting that low drive off the pad of Levine. Quinn Hughes unable to skate it out, but Josh Norris will with Hughes. Quinn Hughes now trying to shake some defenders. Sacconi looking for the stick of Jake Slaker, who is cutting towards the goal. Quinn Hughes up in the play again. Great read by the freshman. Final score in South Bend. Notre Dame advancing to the championship game. Eking out the victory over Penn State. So they await the winner of this matchup between Ohio State and Michigan. They'll be hosting the championship in South Bend. Three minutes to go in this opening period. Gordy Meyer and the Buckeyes lead 1 0 off of the power play goal. The Boston Bruin draft choice. Becker along the boards with Mike Pastioff. There's the clean breakouts that we see from Ohio State, led by Miller. And the forecheck has been the key for Ohio State this year. Helps to have a lot of speedsters as Stork and Lampasso nosing around, but Nicholas Boca deals with the pressure. Wyatt Egg. Confident plays there by Wyatt Egg to be able to recognize he had support around him, be able to step up on that red line. So often hear coaches talk about defending the blue line, the sophomore up on the red line. Ultra confident. Freddy Girard. The Ohio native. The dump and now the chase, but he's contained by Martin. Squirts in front, but it's Cooper Marodi there to pick it up for Michigan. Paul Darone neatly knocks it down and will tap it in. Final 90 seconds of the period. Marodi. Leaks back to center. The pressure from Ohio State a little too much. 
Nice stick there by the Buckeyes in the defensive zone to just be able to thwart that Cooper Moroni little dump pass in the middle for the defense who's going to have an opportunity to create a shot. This is Matthew Weiss turning, looking for availability. Lazinski the shot. Levine down to make the save and more importantly, doesn't allow a rebound. Take another look here. Great speed in the... Wonderful save by Levine because he was backed into his goal crease. I think a bit more with the player to his right. Had to be deeper if there was a rebound or a possible pass to be able to take away that angle. And Tanner Lazinski with the first grade A opportunity on his stick. Cappy and Pizzo warming up back in our Chicago studios for our auto owners insurance intermission report upcoming. 55 seconds to go in the first period here in Columbus, Ohio from Nationwide Arena. It's an offside there as Yop struggled to bring it over the line. Confident blue line protection there by the Wolverines. Really both of these teams have played well between the blue lines, clogging things up. The end-to-end -end action has really not opened up. Billy McCall, assistant coach there with Mel Pearson. They call Billy McCall the nickname Full Throttle. Joya. Dumping it in. Quinn Hughes on the retrieval. 35 seconds to go. Michigan can't clear it. Takes a deflection right into the chest there of Hayden Levine. Yeah, he'll keep it with him. Retraction by Quinn Hughes because he was joining that play offensively when the puck was turned over. Wisely recognized and then and back to support Chaconi. Takes Kearney's stick to the net there. Had there been a rebound opportunity, Levine able to hold on to that play. But it's not all about offense, and there's two sides of it. When it goes poorly, you're cheating. When it goes well, you're anticipating. <laughs> It's all semantics. It's Subtle differences, seconds. but the good ones anticipate. The miners are riddled with cheaters, I'll tell you that. Icing is the call. Joshua. Look at scoring by period last six games. Michigan really having their way in the first two periods, but then all of a sudden, the Buckeyes, you see strong, 18 goals in the final two periods and a 19th in an overtime victory. So far, that trend, if you will, would favor the Ohio State Buckeyes, given the harder time in the first period, yet looks like they will leave with an advantage. Good poke check there by Slaker to prevent Dakota Joshua from entering the zone. And a quiet ending to this first period. Ohio State out shooting Michigan 13-9. Michigan, they got a breakaway from Quinn Hughes. Quinn Hughes also hit a goal post. It was the Buckeyes striking on the power play. Gordy Meyer with his first of the season. And a great movement around the exterior on the power play. Dakota Joshua posting up in front, but the Michigan Wolverines had their opportunities. Quinn Hughes hit that post. He was involved offensively as well. Stay tuned after the break. Rick and Paul will be along from our Chicago studios with the Auto Owners Insurance Intermission Report. One period complete. Gordy Meyer and the Ohio State Buckeyes lead. They outshot Michigan, but Michigan had their chances. They hit a goal post and they had a missed breakaway. The key there, though, one power play goal from Steve Rollick's team. Paired up with Ben Clymer, I'm Dan Kelly. As you, we welcome you back to the broadcast booth. Special time, special teams so important this time of the year in Ohio State, both on the power play and the penalty kill. That's their specialty. Well, they have been good there all year long. Michigan needs to increase their discipline. They cannot give them give themselves a opportunity to have to take a penalty, retract better defensively stay between yourself and the offensive player and also communicate there will be breakdowns and you have other players at deeper depths if you can communicate it should be able to cover up for you Ohio State they're the second seed 
in this tournament, the highest seed they've been in five years of the Big Ten Conference. Notre Dame, they squeak by, narrowly defeating Penn State 3-2 on their home ice, so they'll host the championship game of the tournament next Saturday at 8 Eastern as they await a winner of this matchup. But first, before we begin the second period, we check in with Brett Fletch. Well, thanks, Dan. Just a couple of things to clean up from that opening period. Remember, the goal that was called back by Ohio State would have been the game's first goal. Reason for the whistle, simple change of possession. Shot, Michigan touched it in front of the net. Then on the goal that did count, a lot of frustration from the Wolverines coaches because if you'll remember, Dakota Raby, who blocked two shots on that shift, blocked one about 20 seconds in, had a great chance to clear it. The puck was skipping and bouncing. He didn't get good stick on it, good wood on it. And the Wolverines never got it out before Gordy Meyer let that blast go. They have first touch clears on the penalty kill, and the Buckeyes have been good at that all year long, but it has been a common trend. The first time, well, the goalie can make that save. The second time, I believe the goalie will make that save as well. It's those third touches, time and time again, will end up behind your netminder. Tony Calderon, he led Michigan last year with 15 goals, 23 this season for number 17. Romeo the save. He brushes it away to a safe place for his defenseman to exit the zone. There was tra traffic out front of Romeo there as Hughes leaned into one. Eggy putting Yaps into a foot race and the Speedway Indiana native lives up to his hometown. But Quinn Hughes ends up picking up possession and dumping it in with a little help. Pass behind Yops. Circling back here is Kevin Miller. Great recognition there by Warren that he was going to have an opportunity to turn that puck over in the neutral zone. Josh Norris breaking in. Slaker goes to the goal. That's off the shoulder of Romeo. Norris tried to catch Romeo cheating there, testing him high on the short side. Player pushing to the back door. Could have been a pass opportunity. Slaker. Throwing his weight around along the near wall. Now finds the puck in front. The backhand attempt. Romeo was ready. We spoke to Steve Miller before the game. Do you remember what he said he likes most in Sean Romeo's name? Game was being calm. And how about that play? Deeply moved to the other side. Yet Sean Romeo, cool like the other side of the pillow. Very structurally sound, doesn't have to move any of his limbs. He's in a good spot from the initial push with his right skate. He rave about his focus and his preparation. He keeps his phone in airplane mode on game day. That says something for today's youth. This here's Mike Pastioff, closed down by Meyer, and then it's centered in front. There's Luke Stork, though, to slide it to center. That's unbelievable. I love that. <laughs> should be a rule. If I was a coach, I'd want that as a rule. Everyone. Radio silence. I know everybody would sneak a little peek during nap time on game day. Thanks to Ben Clymer. I'm Dan Kelly. Fred Fletch between the benches. Our BTN crew. So good to have you along for our semifinal coverage. Luke Stork looking for some room. Relentless pressure there by the Wolverines really pushing down low, that third line of Becker, pass job, and pass job. And there's Winborg from about 15 feet out. Romeo the stop, and his teammates do the rest. Now they counter. But in an NHL building tonight, the home of the Columbus Blue Jackets nationwide arena. She's aged well. Opened up in 2000 as it's dumped in. Levine will stop it. For loose. Really hard to believe it's been that long, and you're right, this arena has maintained its status well amongst the ranks that are always being upgraded. Raby trying to swing it in the middle. Instead, it leaks back out to center, hammered in by Loose. Mr. Steady back there, Sasha LaRock. This is not a big group of defensemen. Six foot one Matt Miller is the biggest of the blue liners. Well, six foot two, Shikone is gonna provide us with a whistle, plays that puck with a high stick as it was dumped in. That will give the Buckeyes an offensive 
opportunity to the right of Levine. Steve Rollick will put his top line out. Weiss will draw. Stronger side for a left-handed player. His backhand pulling this puck back to Meyer. Meyer didn't really look ready. Meyer was communicating with the equipment staff trying to get a new stick there. I bet he wishes he didn't because that was such a clean win by Weiss. Good stick or average stick or maybe even kind of a bad stick. He had a lot of space in front of him to be able to lean into that one. But no stick. Not very good. Low drive. Levine a save. Gerard turns and fires it wide. Gordy Meyer, the goal scorer tonight for Ohio State. Number five on that blue line will hold it in. Weiss kicks it back to the point. Eventually finds Weiss again. Miller, the one-timer, patted aside by Levine. Big bouncy rebound. Cooper, Marodi, and Michigan clear. Been a few loose pucks that the Buckeyes have found in succession. And it's plays like that, Dan, where all of a sudden you have to start to watch the Wolverine players, make sure they don't clutch a player down low. Cannot afford to give the Buckeyes many more power play opportunities. That discipline in their defensive zone is oh so important. Well, a couple of Big Ten goaltender of the year finalists involved in this game. Sean Romeo versus Hayden Levine and Mr. Consistent down on South Bend, Indiana, Kale Morris. If you get a vote, who do you vote for? I vote for Sean Romeo. For what he's meant to this team, Kale Morris is a very defensively structured team via Jeff Jackson in front of him. Not to say that the Buckeyes aren't, but I believe that Romeo plays a larger percentage of that. Norris walks in shooting. Warren looking for the rebound. Romeo the save, and there he continues to do what he's done this season, help lead the team, and I agree with you, Ben, in a slight advantage. I would pick Sean Romeo's goaltender of the year. There's one person who's not in that conversation that we've had over the last two years, that being Eric Shearhorn, who's won that award the past two seasons. When you look at the amount of goals Ohio State allowed last year compared to this year, and the one big difference is the guy in goal, the main transfer who had to sit out last season, Sean Romeo. Joshua he's wrapped up by Martin. Wyatt Aggie strolls in from the point. Keeps it in with the skate. Stork fires it high and wide. Two turnovers there going the Buckeyes way. Aggie being able to pinch on both of them. Dakota Joshua. Wyatt Aggie. Low drive, Levine pads it aside through a screen and finally cleared by Michigan. Dakota Josh with a third turnover and puck possession created. And Wolverines get an opportunity to touch it. They ice it. They will not be able to change. Take a look back at this two-on-one opportunity that Romeo is rock solid on. Michigan is called a 30-second timeout. We'll take a brief break here as Ohio State leading 1-0. Middle out in Minneapolis to determine a national champion. The 2018 NCAA Women's Frozen Four begins Friday with the national semifinals right here on BTN and streaming live on BTN to go and Fox Sports go. Ohio State, they played their first ever game in tournament history today. They shut out Boston College 2-0. Cassidy Sove with 38 saves. Big congratulations. Congratulations to the Buckeyes. They have turned things around. Wisconsin will make their fifth straight trip to the Frozen Four. Abby Rock scoring two goals in 16 seconds in the second period. That's a tournament record, her quick production. Minnesota, for the first time in seven years, will not be in the Frozen Four. Being a Minnesota, I will provide a narrative that I believe that the Olympic year always puts the Gophers in a tough position to compete in the NCAA ranks. Due to a large number of participants on that Olympic team. Who's number 74, Nicholas Boca. They call him one of the best trash talkers in college hockey. 
is a plus minus leader back there on the blue line as well for Michigan. Pastyoff shot going well wide off of Joyo. There to pick up the pieces is Mason Yost. That hit him in his left hand. He's shaking that hand, that hand that would be controlling of the stick. As Pastyoff is flattened by Pooley in the neutral zone. The freshman steps up in the neutral zone, just asserts himself. Nicholas Boca, penalty upcoming to Ohio State. Extra attacker on here for Michigan. As Girard gains possession, now the penalty issued, charging the call. So Austin Pooley will come back onto the ice after running Pastyoff over just outside of the very penalty box. He will now be occupying. And Dan, in my opinion, it's really the extra high finish with the hands there that draws more attention. I always thought charging kind of a fickle call for an open ice play. At times, it's like you're, you're getting a penalty for checking too hard. When you're in a position where you're close to the boards, I think charging is a great safety measure. Open ice, at times I look at it and say, well, you know, there's nothing wrong with, with good solid contact at a great rate of speed if you're not putting a position, not putting a player in a position of harm. Kashyov got caught with his head down there. And there is some onus for the player with the puck to have a understanding of his surroundings. Nonetheless, the Michigan power play will have an opportunity. The power play, as we discussed before, has struggled this season. But last Friday, they really found lightning in a bottle for power play goals. So an Arcelor middle power play here. Michigan just getting underway here as we approach the midway point of the second period. Quinn Hughes shot out of a rocket from behind that net. Blows a tire and still is able to tip that to a teammate. Ohio State, they allowed one power play goal on four tries last weekend versus Michigan State. And here a bright beginning to their first penalty kill of the period. Ciccone and Hughes a little bunched up in the near corner. Now some separation on this Michigan power play. Marodi loses it to Wheedle, but the Wolverines hold in. Quinn Hughes dancing and prancing. Couldn't get the shot through, and Wheedle it from his knees will clear. Surprised to see Quinn Hughes try to beat a player one-on-one -on -one in the slot area there on the power play. He doesn't have a lot of fear in this game. I would say he's very confident. I'm envious of that amount of confidence. In some regards for the people who watched the golf tournament today, it's a lot like putting. As you get older and you've been burned a few times, you start to get a little shaky on those three-footers. And unfortunately for Michigan fans, well, he hasn't been burned very often in his young career and has the confidence showing. Not a lot of yips for number 43. Sometimes so confident we'll turn the puck over. But right now, Kearney trying to cause, but it's Hughes and a little support. Michigan right back up with it. Norris missing the connection with Becker. Meyer throws it right up the middle, and it's the right route. Gerard causing some problems in this power play breakout for Michigan. Nice patience there by Gerard, just waiting in that center ice area, trying to use his stick to steer traffic. And once you found a player in a vulnerable position, you can tell he's trying to get rid of it. He does not want to hold it. All of a sudden, then you can really lean. Let's take a look here at Wyatt Eggie who steps up. He's going to make a play into the slot area on his backhand. Amazing confidence there after originally creating confrontation with Quinn Hughes to have the presence of mind to be able to bump that puck in the middle is one thing, but also the communication. Seeing that play, there's no way you do that without a player in the slot communicating. Nice sign for Steve Rollick's group. By Meyer from his own side of center, so an icing on Ohio State. Sometimes you see high scoring affairs between these two teams, but it's taken a playoff field of this one. Just one goal scored so far. Mel Pearson hoping that the stature and quality of their opponent tonight helps them 
buckle things down defensively. He's got his own style, that's for sure. Taking over from the legend. Freddie Girard. Crosses it in high over the goal. Joyo has to back off as Raby now on the forecheck here cruising in on Aggie. One underrated unit back there in terms of mobility, Ohio State. Lazinski. Loose gets enough of him, but Lazinski hangs on right in front. Matthew Weiss couldn't make that final play as he was knocked down when he went to shoot. Lazinski with a great little sneaky pass to just thread the needle and get that out into the front of the ice. Play was dead, but then he makes that quick little pass. Paul Derone, Marodi up the middle. Marodi trying to break away, but angling him there is Wyatt Aggie. Late in the shift for Aggie. Been disciplined as well tonight. Halfway through this second period, Luke Stork, a shot, probably going to knuckle wide, but Hayden Levine keeping things safe, grabbing everything near his goal. Gordy Myers, first period power play goal, still standing up for Ohio State. Uh, what have you done well to keep it a one-shot game right now? I'm looking for things. I mean, we're playing okay. We gotta, we gotta get our hands a little bit dirtier. We gotta play harder. Um, obviously, we're doing a, a better job this period of playing in the zone a little bit more. But we've got to play a lot better uh, when we have the puck. We're over, overpassing the puck, not skating, getting the pucks in the net like we should. We've got to be better. You wanted to clean things up defensively this week. You've done that, haven't you? For the most part, I mean, we've had a couple turnovers in our zone. We have to understand and manage the game. Uh, what's going on a couple situations we didn't like but you're gonna have those you're gonna have situations in a game where you'll make some mistakes thanks for doing this okay thanks Fred sense that Mel Pearson wants his team to play desperate playoff hockey well, their tournament run can end here in about 30 minutes the other thing he really heard there was accountability being created by Mel Pearson not to say it wasn't with Red Berenson but that continuum was so important and Sometimes players are giving an inch, they'll take a mile and gambling. Well, it's not going to happen. There's Quinn Hughes with another try. He's had the three best scoring chances. Marodi trying to sneak it in back in front. Hughes remains a threat there on the hash marks. Marodi easily patted aside by Sean Romeo, but a little consistent pressure here from Michigan. Hughes' shot is blocked. The poke check by Romeo. Michigan able to lift it over him. Cooper Marodi, the man, and Michigan has tied it. Well, in Fred's interview, Mel Pearson talked about needing to play a little harder, needing to go to the dirty areas of the ice. Well, Quinn Hughes puts this into the dirty areas of the ice, and their leader, Cooper Marodi, goes to the net hard, crashing down on Sean Romeo, and will get credit for this goal, I believe, from his stomach. He's able to leverage that puck up and over Sean Romeo. Take a look here as 20 stick is the only thing in the picture. And they're taking a look to see if there was a player to touch it after Cooper Marodi touched that puck with his glove. One guy stick there, Freddie yep. Girard. Nonetheless, not another Michigan player. Would have been Marodi to Marodi, if not for that Buckeye stick. Initially looked like Sean Romeo had diffused the situation with the poke check upcoming here, but then he kind of gets himself out of position in the process. It was a strong gamble. I think that was a play that, you know, the puck was in question, and he's going to be aggressive. He was sound in his positioning on that strong side, but I think he would have been in a worse position if he just retracted back to the goal line and tried to wait for the play to come off of Cooper Marodi. It really was a tremendous play by Cooper Marodi having body control. Let's head down to ice level. Fred, what do you have? 
while the referees are over talking to Steve Rollick. Ohio State's contention is that Cooper Maroney closed his hand on the puck before bringing it down. And even though it was next touched by an Ohio State player stick, should have been a whistle right there, closing hand on the puck. I can understand Coach Rollick's opinion on that, but at some point, it, is it directly down to the ice? That would be the question I would ask. It. Based on that replay, there's some validity to Coach Rollick's complaint. He blows a tire, a potential three on two for Michigan. Kearney, though, back to nullify the threat. Marodi's 13th goal of the season. Brendan Warren sealing the wall. Yannick Moser the takeaway. Got it down by Piazza. Wiedela a stab at it, but Michigan will clear under eight minutes to go in the second period. Wiedela. Lampasso doesn't want to touch as that puck was hit with a high stick. Faceoff should head back into the Buckeye zone. It's an offensive zone faceoff for the Wolverines. Interesting talking to Michigan coaching staff saying Ohio State is so good on the penalty kill, it allows them to kind of play with that extra edge. And they don't have to be fearful all the time of taking a penalty because they know they can rectify the situation. Well, they can, but I also think their discipline is uh, a very strong part of their game. They realize that hockey is a game of mistakes, and some of those mistakes will require penalties, but not often. Joshua flashing the skill there for a big man. The eventual end product was a shot wide. A lot to like about Dakota Joshua's game, and when he starts to take control, it is a different Ohio State third line, an awfully scary one. Luke Stork will be the save. A message from Steve Rollick and the coaching staff to a player like Dakota Joshua is you can make $45,000 or $5 million a year. It's your decision. Tremendous honesty with that play, and he does have that sort of frame. The six foot three player could control a game in the National Hockey League. One could argue even better than the college ranks, which would be in a bit of a more tight, confined area where that size would really prove him. Win Hughes, strong defensive stance there on Kearney. Boricos right in front, Winborg. And again, sprawling down on the ice, a little out of position, but Sean Romeo keeps it out. A rare defensive lapse in the recognition that a player was coming straight down Main Street there. Hughes ties up Cooley and is able to kick it ahead. Eventually, Michigan will clear shot right back in by Miller and Ohio State. Offside on the play. Let's take another look at that. Michigan opportunity and watch the players for the Buckeyes focused on the puck. Often you hear coaches talk about having your head on a swivel. That head on a swivel was unfortunately fixated at the puck. That allowed Winborg the opportunity to hop in behind and get a great A opportunity on Win or excuse me on Romeo. Communication of the second fatal sin on that opportunity. Matt Miller off the faceoff. He and Gordy Meyer will shoot it in. To Girard again, just attacking that puck in the offensive zone. That really gives Lazinski the opportunity to wait and see if a defenseman who's put in a tough position based on the speed of Girard was going to turn that puck over. He's got sneaky skills, Freddie Girard. Dexter danks the low drive, patted aside by Romeo. Danks again. Michigan has come to life here in the second period. Marodi. Screen shot there wide of the goal. Hughes skating everywhere. Collects the rebound below the goal line in the corner. Love that. There, Lazinski gets a shoulder on him. Weiss trying to break away. Penalty upcoming to Michigan. Meyer's shot is blocked as Calderon's going to go off, it looks like, for the Wolverines holding the call. 
Tony Calderon was backing up the freshman defenseman and he wrapped that hand up and then he gets the other side in as well. And another easy call for the official. Once the right arm goes out, the left arm comes back in. When Hughes got caught off ice a little bit, but that's the good thing is, is he was catching up with that speed, but still Michigan forced to commit a penalty. So third opportunity here for the Buckeyes on the power play. The number one faceoff man in the Big Ten. Dakota Joshua will take this draw. Close to 60% of his draws not there. But it's Miller holding in to begin the power play for the Buckeyes. John Wiedela pass eluding Dakota Joshua. And it's cleared by Norris. Slayton shows that aggression and speed. Somehow gets to that puck beating Joyo to it. Weisler goes off the ice after exerting a great deal of energy. Here's Meyer, the breakout machine, meandering his way into Michigan territory. Matt Miller holding in. Yes, yes. Joyo thought about it. Miller does more than think about it, but it's blocked by Raby. Miller's got a bomb, too. Joshua providing the screen in front will hunt the puck down. Levine without a stick, the defenseman bringing it back to him. Matt Miller shooting. Blocker to side by Levine. Wheedle a whack at it in front. Michigan able to clear. Wow, what a quick turnaround for Levine. He grabs the stick as the puck is essentially coming at him. And then Wheedle with that great A just to his right. The scouting report on Hayden Levine recently. He's been okay, but he has made the critical save at the big time. Lazinski, Girard pushes back in front for Weiss, missing the final connection to Mason Yachts. 23 seconds to go in the power play. Iggy shot off a of body, sailing wide, and the Wolverines behind the stick at Griffin Loose will clear again. Iggy trying to find a lane there to get that down to Weiss, who is in front of the goal. And unbelievable what a step he's taken in wide Iggy, a player that you know, we recognized as a freshman, but. His assertion and his confidence with the puck is so different this sophomore year. Yoff steals right in front. Lazinski. Oh, Levine there on the goal line to make the save. And a beautiful, quick passing play from Ohio State. They're not done. Lazinski. Yoff rips it wide. Power play has expired, but not the pressure. Iggy holding in. Mason Yoff creeps. Fires off a leg and wide. Tired Wolverine defenders here. And Norris with intentions there shoots it over the glass. Tanner Luzinski in the Ohio State Buckeyes. A great opportunity to take the lead in a quick passing play, but the score remains 1 1 here late in the second, thanks to Levine. That's what Mel Pearson meant when he said he's been making those critical saves and they really need him and Levine doing that here late in the second. He was without a stick here. You can see the defenseman bringing that stick back. Miller brings the puck in and then Wheedler jams in on that rebound. There's the netminder without a stick and the recognition of the defenseman right there. And Boca does a nice job of identifying that he had time and space to go get that. Wasn't going to leave a player unattended to in the slot area. Because he's not going to leave the front of the goal unattended to. I have never seen a goalie go get his own stick. They must talk about that in goalie camp because I've never heard them say that they can. Hey, right, Jim, what do you get Michigan down between the benches? At time well, Mel Pearson, as vociferous as I've heard him, he brought his defense together and said, we have to be stronger along the wall. All that happened because we were too soft. Let's get, learn a lesson going forward in this game. 
So a little intensity earlier in the period from Mel Pearson. A little more animated than we've seen the legend Red Berenson in years past. He takes the influence from the legend, but also himself behind that bench. Chance to clear. Luke Stork holds in, but only momentarily as it ricochets to center. Flung right back in by Sasha LaRock. A name we haven't discussed very often, and for a player of defensive stature, Sasha LaRock's name, when it's not discussed, he hasn't turned the puck over, and he's probably made it difficult on the offensive players. Quinn Hughes with a little spinorama to begin the breakout. That point just showing up. <laughs> so, so good with the puck. So fun to watch. Cat like quickness back there from number 43. This is Joshua. Good little one hand pass over. Weedle of the drive. Levine grabs it with his left hand and will keep it for a face off. Stay tuned for our auto owners insurance intermission report. Barron's done with the popcorn that we saw him enjoying in the opening 20 minutes. He's got his game face on now. It's it's playoff time. It's letter jacket. <laughs> That's Kept right. that in good shape. It's got to be different for Red to be able to sit back and actually enjoy these games, not worry about managing the bench and who's going, who's not going, and also really see and appreciate the program that, to a large extent, he built. Good hands now. Norris and across the line. Gets a piece of LaRock in the far corner. John Wheedle backhanding ahead. Tanner Lazinski, LaRock the drive. That bounding wide of the goal. Kept in by Aggie. Gerard fires. Blocked by Luce with 50 seconds to go. A potential three on two the other way for the Wolverines. Norris to Slaker. This is both Slaker and Warren. Quickly countering. It's Girard. Two Wolverines back. LaRock will safely push it in. The two number nines clash. Two talented number nines that one day will probably be playing in the NHL. Josh Norris and Tanner Lazinski. Sports loose for Joseph Sicconi. Off the glass perfectly. And wave off a potential icing. Ten seconds to go. Wazinski able to dance around Hughes. Five seconds. Michigan running out of time. Ravy tries to go over to Hughes, but excellent defensive play there by Joyo. That could be an articulation of exactly what Mel Pearson was talking about, overpassing the puck. When you have a shooting opportunity, I understand it's late. It would be great to have a four-by-six backdoor play, but the fact is a two-on-one was at their disposal, and they were unable to register a shot. Cooper Marodi scores was the only goal of that second period after 40 minutes all tied at one stay tuned after the break rick and paul will be along from our chicago studios with the auto owners insurance intermission report look at the numbers through two periods of play michigan out shooting ohio state 13 to 11 in that second period cooper marodi with a team high five shots the power play goal the only power play goal of this game michigan looking for a little more opportunity on the power play here in the third period. You gotta work hard to create those opportunities. Wait, turn those legs. Speaking of Cooper Marodi, look at the Big Ten Player of the Year finalist, joined by Kale Morris. He's also up for the Goaltender of the Year Award, and Tanner Lazinski. Fine defenseman Trevor Hamilton leading the nation in block shots up against a couple of South Benders and Jordan Gross and Jake Evans. For you, Ben, you're a little partial, but Casey Middlestead might win this award. Quinn Hughes, though, some stiff competition, and can't forget about Mitchell Lewandowski. I'm actually surprised that Hughes isn't in on the Defensive Player of the Year, only a couple points back of Trevor Hamilton, then a net minor position, Romeo Levine, Cale Morris. Two of the three coaches nominated for Coach of the Year finalists involved in this game but it might go to jeff jackson the newbie of the conference well, notre dame well represented in a lot of those categories and making 
their presence felt early just shot out of a rocket to begin this season extending a huge point lead faltering a bit down the stretch but we're able to be victorious this evening so just underway the final period of regulation Lazinski sneaks in he's done that a few times He's sneaky for a big guy who you think you wouldn't be able to lose track of. He does have a nose for that little space between the defense and maybe the offensive, defensive player. They cheat a bit high. Early on side, Paul Marone unable to make the connection with Cooper Marodi. Matthew Weiss tentatively over the line as his team is changing, so we'll slide it in. Winding up is Dexter Danks. Water skiing across center, polluting defenders. Block, he grabs the rebound, but it's Ohio State up with it. Gordy Meyer bouncing to the line, not out. Second try, Norris will keep it in. Nice in here on Ohio State. Start strong and finish strong. That's what these two teams are trying to do in Ohio State. Boy, in the last seven games, they've been finishing real strong. Well, a good sign for Steve Rollick's group to be able to withstand that first period push that the Wolverines have been so good on in the last three weekends and now hoping to continue their own trend. Now, Pearson in Michigan, though, you just win one period on the road and you're playing for a championship next Saturday night at, at Notre Dame. Correct, the season series would uh, be a single win against this Ohio State team, yet the most important win would go their direction. Slaker and Warren busting out. Could be offside there on Norris. The whistle stays silent. Redirected in by Wiedela. Maybe he didn't get a stick on it as it ends up being an icy. A little surprised to see that whistle occur. I thought Wheatle did get a stick on that long feed. I believe it was Matt Miller who moved that puck up. So the players that were trying to change will come back on the ice. Hawkeyes have not lost in regulation when scoring first. They opened up the scoring in the first period from Gordy Meyer, Cooper Marodi. Notched his 13th of the year in the second period. Level terms here in the semifinal matchup. Becker and Pastioff. He'll deal it back to the point. Loose's shot is blocked by Kearney. And Karam's all the way back into Michigan territory. Buckeyes just surrounding this puck. Wheeler was in early trying to push Boca. Don't shoot the puck as much, but it seems like Ohio State and Penn State have some similarities to their game. They certainly both have a high rate of speed for which they push offensively. Guys failing to clear it. Michigan trying to make them pay. Danks bumped off the puck by Joshua, recovered by Marodi. Bouncing puck, Calderon finally settles. Slaps it behind the goal for an awaiting Cooper Marodi. Hughes the one-timer, guns it wide. Terrific. Peripheral vision there by Cooper Marodi being able to find Hughes over his shoulder. Lightning quick release from Quinn Hughes. The other way, it's Luke Stork on Ohio State offside. Nice play by Ciccone there being able to gap up and try to push a player offside. Watch Marodi look over twice, checks his left shoulder and delivers that puck at the precise right time for the freshman Hughes to be able to pounce on that. He's a different skater than former Minnesota Golden Gopher Mike Riley. Is he a better skater overall? Is he, is he more elusive? Tough to say. First off, he's 17, and we saw Mike Riley come in the league at 19 years old. Uh, you know, and Mike Riley was, you know, frankly, the most electric player in the Big Ten during his final couple of seasons. Um, you know, surprised to see him not have that impact right away. Uh, he walked away, obviously, from the contract with the Columbus Blue Jacks. Jack and signing with Minnesota, being traded most recently. But Quinn Hughes, I'll tell you what, is going to be an absolute dandy for whoever picks him up. Reminds some people of a young Nick Letty. 
He's got that Paul Coffey glide. Yeah, you know, I would say another player as well in the pro ranks. I played with Dan Boyle. I, I like a lot of what Quinn Hughes does that uh, really mirrors with Dan Boyle. A smaller statured player yet competes defensively, adds so much offensively, controls the puck on the power play, still shoots it quite well. And it took a while for Dan Boyle to get his opportunity. Of course, the NHL much different now. It suits his game a lot better, and it looks like a penalty here early in the third period and it's going to go on Michigan and Quinn Hughes speak of the devil Let's see if we can't rewind things take a look at young Quinn Hughes in the defensive zone but this infraction occurred so he's yeah he's just kind of pinning that stick in under the armpit I believe that was the call of one I think is you're a little bit of a more established upperclassman. You might give the ref a bit of the business after that call. Quinn Hughes respectfully going to the penalty box. Michigan's coaching staff pleased with their penalty killing, the aggression they've shown so far. They have allowed one power play goal. That was way back in the first. Lazinski the drive. It doesn't get through. Blocked at the defense. Piazza not only blocks it, clears it all the way down on net. Yopst spots Matthew Weiss near side. Wyatt Agee, some room up top. Tanner Lazinski, the forward on the point. Piazza, the little stick lift. Squirts in front, dangerous puck. Good keep in by Agee. Mason Yopst waits, fires, and that's deflected out of play. I believe again by Sam Piazza getting the piece of his body on that as Mason Yopst was trying to find a lane. Slowly stick handling that puck, keeping his head up, trying to see what might open up. Look at all this time in front of him. Yeah, that stick way out. Actually, Piazza moved too far to the right there, yet had recovered. Snaking that stick out. We've talked a lot about Quinn Hughes, but I'll tell you what, in two years when you see Josh Norris, he will be an absolute animal. This kid skates so well, he competes. He's got a little bit of edge to his game as well. He'll be a fun player to watch. By Joshua, he can shoot the puck as well, number nine in the maze and blue. 70 seconds to go on the power play. Batted in by Joshua. Second power play goal. Might go to John Wiedela. Talks about the importance of special teams, and it continues to be the trend here. The Buckeyes move this puck in. Wheeler gets a stick on it, directing it at the net. Not sure if Joshua then gets a touch after. He just waved his stick at it. It might be Wheeler's goal. You know, sometimes you watch a player and you just see how hard they celebrate. Dakota Joshua on both of these goals, yeah, it goes in off his shin pad, I believe, was so ecstatic on the first goal, and equally as ecstatic on this goal, I thought maybe that was just, you know, you're excited for your team, we're going to win a big, important game. Well, he, fortunately, he was able to not only celebrate, make an impact, but score this goal, and he's been a bear to handle down low. The officials taking another look at this, probably trying to examine if there's any sort of kicking motion, but like we talked about before, Dakota Joshua's presence puts Hayden Levine in a tough position. He has to fight very, very hard to be able to see the light of or si line of sight on the puck, and also has to play quite a bit deeper in his net. A good goal as we check in for the first time in this third period with Fred. Well, you know Matt Miller and. Matt Joyo really compliment one another on the power play. Joyo is always looking for a stick to pass to out front. Miller more of the bomb. We see the shot he's got from the point. Little roll reversal there as Miller, rather than unload, he looked for the stick of Wiedela, and it results in a power play goal in an Ohio State lead. Probably the Michigan Wolverines really respecting the shot of Matt Miller there, wanting to get out, play tight on him, but once he winds that stick up not a fun one to have 
make an impact on your skate. I don't know if there's a better forward in the Big Ten than Dakota Joshua at screening the goaltender and taking away his eyes. I would agree with that. From what we've seen this year, he has had the greatest impact in front of that net. And another big reason you look at his game and you think, gosh, this is just going to transfer so well in the National Hockey League. Six foot three goes into those dirty areas. 14th of the season for Dakota Joshua. Eggy and Maroney battle in the far corner. It's Matthew Weiss beginning the breakout. Big gamble there to spin and fire that puck into the center area of the ice on his backhand, partially blind. This is Maroney trying to get one back for Michigan. Cuts in. Wrist shot is snared by Sean Romeo, making it look easy. And we haven't seen much of this. Joyo, a little post whistle. Take a look here. See the player going down towards the net. Who's that? Quinn Hughes actually blows a hole there. That allows Cooper Marodi the ability to skate laterally as he takes the defenseman Joyo in a position where he can't simply pivot with his player. And yeah, then all of a sudden the jousting begins. Would have been a better trade for the Buckeyes than it would have been. The Wolverines had those two players been lined up for coincidentals. Quinn Hughes, a nice little decoy. Well, just great hockey sense, realizing that if he drives that center lane, he's going to create an opportunity, a huge void behind him for Cooper Marodi to find a space, find a spot to shoot that puck. Nicholas Boca, first to it. But Ohio State recovers possession. Aggie, the one-timer, Matt Miller, snaps his stick in half. Hayden Levine will cover up that puck. The side of his goal with a lot of tenacious Buckeyes poking around. Dakota Joshua and the Ohio State Buckeyes in the semifinal matchup have taken a 2-1 lead. Tomorrow, our experts offer their take on the entire bracket and bring you reaction from around the conference. The Big Ten Basketball and Beyond Selection Sunday Special presented by Motorist Insurance Group tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. Eastern right here on BTN. It's got to be a little bit of a thrill, Ben. We talked about it earlier in the year with the collegiate Big Ten game at Madison Square Garden. This is eventually where these guys want to get to, the National Hockey League nationwide arena, the home of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Yeah, nice uh, turn of events, if you will, with the scheduling of things to allow this game to take place at Nationwide Arena. And yeah, a bit of foreshadowing for some of these players. You talked about the pair of nines that will for sure have a opportunity to play against each other in the National Hockey League, that being Lazinski and Josh Norris, amongst others. Brendan Warren, the slap shot, flutters harmlessly wide off of a stick. Maybe it will help motivate a hockey rink getting built one day on the Ohio State campus. Yeah, tough situation to play in a basketball arena. Very difficult to fill that right now. And it's a less than ideal. Fan experience. I'd say more hockey specific. Third period, almost six minutes old. Both teams at full strength. And the quintessential blue liner, Quinn Hughes, number 43, slides it in. Lampasso there to grab it. Quick, smooth breakout by Ohio State. Stork the dump. It'll chase it down. Oh, there was some room there. Levine, though, bodies it away. LaRock shooting off the pad of Hayden Levine. Closing things down. Gutsy play by LaRock. It works. Now it's LaRock motoring forward. And able to get the shot through. And the defense was trying to change for the Michigan Wolverines. They identified went back into their structure. Lampasso shooting save Levine. And the rebound dealt with quickly. This slow leg putt will give the opportunity for the defense to get that change they desired. Danks bringing the forechecking pressure. Not an issue for LaRock. Lazinski. Gets it back from Freddy Girard. Lazinski and Weiss standing in front. Now join him in the corner. Weiss will keep it in. Sam 
Wisconsin, Michigan. The chip off the glass, racing forward is Tony Calderon. Joyo back for Ohio State. Down goes the referee. A penalty coming up to Ohio State. Levine off for the extra skater. So the Wolverines will have an opportunity to score their first power play goal of the season against the Ohio State Buckeyes. As the officials have a brief confrontation conversation. This dinks the inadvertent trip there of the referee. He, he went down, but he kept his arm up. Strong commitment. Yannick Mosier is the guilty party. Cooper Maroney, the leading scorer of the Big Ten, will have an opportunity to take this face off and hopefully not this one up at two for Mel Pearson. Maroney, the right guy to the backhand of the forehand, scores! Power play goal, Michigan. Seconds into the advantage and they equalize. And again, it's Cooper Marodi. Well, first things first, Cooper Marodi does what he needs to do. He wins the face-off. He's going to get this puck back and watch for the kids at home. I thought for sure he was going to shoot this puck. He goes to his backhand, then realizes he doesn't have a ton of angle. Myers comes out with his stick, and he turns all the way around, goes back to the forehand, and kisses this off the post. Because he knows what he's doing. Super unorthodox. I think if you looked at that on video and this had not been a goal, Mel Pearson would have said, Cooper, you got to shoot this puck. Cooper, down a goal. You're on the power play. You're in the slot. You can't go to your backhand. Proves us wrong. Michigan ties it. Still searching for their first lead of the evening. Paso, Sasha LaRock checking over his shoulder. Nick Pastioff there on him. Brother Nick Pastioff fishing forward as well. 15 for the season, second of the game for Cooper Marodi. Leaks in front. Stork is there for Ohio State to skate it away. Boca, though, standing up at the blue line for Michigan. This book is so calm. Brendan Warren and able to move it in deep. Brendan Warren down there, fight for this pocket. Now it's Josh Morris. Warren in front. Pass coming to him, looking for a rebound there from Norris's attempt. Another drive by Norris is blocked. Ohio State right up the middle, helped in by Weedless, so no danger of an icing. Much needed change after that great offensive opportunity by the Wolverines for the Buckeyes defense to get off the ice. Gordy Meyer. Such an effortless skater. Grebe there. Separates him from the puck, and it's the Wolverines once again. Freddy Girard behind Lozinski and it's Michigan. Burrowed in behind his own goal, Quinn Hughes. Slowly over the line, Porikos. Winborg is trailing. Lozinski tries to clear it. Winborg, stubborn as ever, along the near board with Gordy Meyer. Time and room for Lazinski, and he also has the capability of creating some room with those soft hands. It takes a risk there, and you have to wonder, is the risk worth the reward right there? Lazinski dances to the inside, is fortunate to be able to break that puck out. 9.55 to go in the third period. we got a tied game. This week, special teams often uh, tell the story of game this time of season. Is that the case so far? Well, yeah, I mean, it's a good hockey game. Obviously, both teams scored some big goals there in a power play, and, I mean, it's that time of year. 
some short benches the rest of the way. I'm sure. Uh, what are your plans? Well, we'll just play it how it goes. You know, we just got to keep playing our players. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, you got it. Very tight to the vest with his obedience to Fred and how he's going to manage his bench. We'll just see how it goes. But if you said, well, Fred, I'm not going to tell you our plan. This is a <laughs> crucial time right now. <laughs> Under 10 minutes to go in regulation. Cooper Marodi has both Michigan goals. Strong defensive play by Wyatt Agee. Puck not really moving forward for Ohio State. Danks. Trying to find Calderon down deep along that goal line area. Lost in by Dakota Joshua. Into hunted down John Wiedela. He'll deal it back to the point. LaRock. Perrin off of Stork. Kept in by Sasha LaRock. Shifting away to get the shot on target, but it's still blocked. Chance to clear it there for Michigan, and they don't. Stork, Lazinski cuts in front. He's upended. Nice stick there by Cooper Murray defensively. Broke up that play with Dakota Joshua trying to go to the net. You get a feeling we've got another goal left in regulation for two between these two teams. Becker over the head of Sean Romeo, and that's the issue when you miss the net. On the way back out to center, jam back in by the Wolverines. Becker brings it off the wall. Now trying to wrap around a second try. Passed you off a drive, blocked at the defense. So their knees bending but not buckling. And all of this off an opportunity where Romeo had the puck cleared it behind his own net. Probably would have preferred more communication from the defense. Frees that puck, provide a face off. Mason Yops losing it. Michigan some time and room for a clean exit. No! That's tipped out of play right in front of the Ohio State bench. <laughs> Ohio State opening up the scoring thanks to a power play goal in that first period. Michigan outplays him in the second. Morodi adds a second goal here in the third. Joshua gets that power play goal, the second power play goal of the night for Ohio State. Tied at two. We check in with Fred Fletch. You know, Austin Pooley took a penalty at 6.40 the second period, and... The Buckeyes have rolled three lines since Michigan continues to send out all four. There's Freddie Girard. That's the thing that's dangerous about Ohio State. They've got three dangerous lines that on any given night can win a game for Steve Rollick's team. I mean, under the 10-minute mark, there's actually a fortunate play there. The Quinn Hughes didn't get a cross-check on Lazinski. Then that puck turns over, and Girard again arrives with his speed. But I personally would tighten up my lines. I would be going... For this final seven, I mean, really two and a half. I mean, two and a half lines is enough. I mean, these guys are in great condition. You got to find who's hot, and you got to really give those players the opportunity to end this. And you're off until next Saturday. Correct. Tired legs tomorrow does no harm. Single elimination semifinal. Romeo the save. Morris whacking the rebound wide. Swung back in front. Michigan, they're dangerous. Hughes the drive off a leg and wide. Winning more of those confrontations that their coach desired. Just like that, turning that puck over on Lozinski. Keeping the heat on Ohio State. Tony trouble with it on the point. Gordy Meyer the other way for Ohio State. Give and go there for Gordy Meyer, hopping up in that play. Angle to the boards by Quinn Hughes, and here's Quinn Hughes. Supported by Jake Slaker. Michigan is changing. Junior Sacone, so complimentary of what Quinn Hughes does in his game. The junior and very much a defensive-minded defenseman allows Quinn Hughes to play with much more freedom. Dakota Joshua. Quinn Hughes 
Stands up Limpasso and doesn't allow him a look at goal. Easing his way across center. Cooper Marodi. Little timing dump there for Calderon to jump on. Joyo one hands it ahead. Rolls out to center. Cooper Marodi and Calderon team up along the near boards. Recovered by Ohio State as Kearney will reverse. Nice show of patience there by Sasha LaRock, who outweights the four checker and allows himself a little extra time. He shows some poise and confidence under duress, LaRock, and again here. It's Norris. Setters it on his backhand. Yeah, player draped all over him. Unfortunately, that player turned it over. Pops free for Kearney. We're checking pressure a lot to handle right now. Michigan holds it in. Norris, the one-timer, changing directions. It was softened for Sean Romeo to make the save. Oh, no. Now Josh Norris goes after... One of the Buckeyes players, Yannick Mosier, will have to see if the official the penalty right now would be catastrophic for the Michigan Wolverines. Already they've suffered two power play goals by the Buckeyes. Here's the off-speed pitch that comes in on Sean Romeo. Norris was coming to the defense of his teammate Pericos. Moser there with a the little punch back. Yeah, what happened there was uh, Norris dropped his glove, so the one timers with one hand when he went to pick it up after the whistle, Moser stepped on it, and that's when uh, tempers flared. Boys will be boys. Coach once said to me, don't let your battle get in the way of my war. That would have been a good articulation of what uh, Mel Pearson was likely thinking. Don't be selfish, be selfless. Especially with the game on the line. And a bit in the championship game here with under five minutes to go in regulation. Oh, a dangerous puck for Hayden Levine. Second time we've seen him struggle with the hot boards here at Nationwide Arena. Astioff skids out on the four check. Matt Miller back to pick it up. Little pitchfork at the center. Big gamble there by Weedle and going backhand right across the red line. He's standing on the red line. Wouldn't be a terrible idea. Four minutes left in the hockey game. Just simply dump that down the strong wall. Griffin loose. Hits Warren in motion. Josh Norris easily breezes over the line. LaRock the block. Nobody knew where that puck popped up. First track down by Ohio State. Matthew Weiss and Freddie Girard have to back off or they would have been offside. Chicona with a great stick there. A confident step up causes the Buckeyes to go offside. A little opening here. Matthew Weiss pushed to the boards by Hughes and Norris. Girard though and Lazinski get it back only momentarily. Long shift here for Josh Norris. Michigan a chance to clear. They don't. Girard in front. Michigan in desperate need of a change. They've been out a long time. Dakota Joshua sensing that. Trying to truck in front. He does so, but loses it to Quinn Hughes. The player who's not going to run out of energy is Quinn Hughes. Joshua up with it, a potential three on two. Weedle and Joshua, the puck bouncing a lot. Luke Stork. Chips it in front. Push back to the point to Perrin. Off the wall, Joshua saved Levine. And the rebound skated away by Michigan. Great save there by Levine. Don't even think he was able to see it. More just relying upon fundamentals. Go down, hit his left toe. Christian Lampasso. Mason Yacht. Three Wolverines on two Buckeyes. They come away with the puck out of the dust. Quick feed to Gordy Meyer. Eluding the forecheck of Gravy. This is Kearney. Goes to the wall with 
Griffin Lou. So Yops there, a little trip there on Nicholas Boca might have got away with one. The officials really letting him play. Anything that's been questionable has not been whistled here the last 10 minutes or so. Icing here on Michigan. With a minute 57 to go in regulation. The difficult thing about that is players start to read that. They'll start to take a greater and greater amount of liberty with the officials. But at some point, if things continue, we've seen a number of them, that line will be crossed. And it's going to be a huge deal for whomever does it in their team. Reminder, Michigan has burned her one and only timeout. Ohio State has theirs left. Nick sidesteps Boca. that hit from Boca mostly. He's coming in and shooting on those train tracks, trying to run Lazinski over. Joyo, not big back there, but not afraid of a little contact. Becker searching for it. Nick Pastyoff, watched by Wyatt Agee. Minute 20 to go in regulation. Deadlocked at two. Pastioff brothers. There's Joyo bumping off Mike Pastioff. And will rocket it off the glass and away. Stashed in behind the goal by Pastioff. A minute to go. Mason Yop driving the getaway car off a of Weedle, though, and can't put it in deep. Skips over the stick of Joshua as he rakes it in. Quinn Hughes, chance to clear it, unable to. And a reminder, sudden death overtime looming, none of that five-minute stuff. He'll play all night, full 20-minute overtime periods. 27 seconds to go. Chipped ahead, Joshua. Sasha LaRock with Wiedela. Again, it's blocked at the Michigan defense, 15 seconds. Dave Levine, six seconds to go. Tremendous stick dive for Perrin. A late shot there from Piazza, but this semifinal will be settled in overtime. Both teams pushing all the way to the end, riding that line. Time records, regular season, and tournament play. An advantage Ohio State. They've got a little experience here in 2018 in tournament play. They're looking for their fifth straight win and to sweep the series this year and move on to the championship with a win tonight. Well, the power play is making a difference right now. It's Ohio State outscoring Michigan 2-1 with the power play advantage, but nothing settled yet on the brink of our first overtime. Maybe we'll be here for a while. Next to Ben Clymer, I'm Dan Kelly. Always happy to be next to the former Golden Gopher. And Ben, the way this game's being called, they're letting the boys play. I don't know if we're going to see many power plays here in overtime. Well, from that last 10 minutes, I would think not. There were calls that could have went both directions, but players need to maintain that sense of discipline just because that line has moved a bit. You can't all of a sudden try to cross that one and see if they'll move it a little bit more. At some point, there will be a consequential call. It was Dakota Joshua in Ohio State opening up that scoring in the third period, but Cooper Marodi in Michigan just wouldn't go away. Yeah, that net front presence got it going. And Dakota Joshua factoring on both power play goals for the Buckeyes. And all of a sudden, Cooper Marodi passes up a forehand shot and goes backhand. And then twirls all the way back around and kisses that one in off the post. An unorthodox goal, but nonetheless, effective. You know, Cooper Marodi leading the Big Ten with 46 points. Has both of Michigan goals this evening as we check in with Fred Pletch prior to the start of sudden death overtime. 
Well, here's what Mel Pearson told his team this week. 1994, Michigan dominated Lake State. Five straight wins, including a victory in the CCHA championship game. But then at Mun Ice Arena, the first round of the NCAA tournament, the Lakers beat Michigan, and that was it. They went on to become national champions. So Mel's message all week has been, we just have to beat them once. As for Steve Rollick, well, his team, believe it or not, already has an overtime victory over the Wolverines in this building. It came back on March 6, 2016, a regular season game. Yeah, Nick Schilke on the winner for the Buckeyes that night here at the NHL facility. Everybody trying to get to Saturday, St. Patrick's Day weekend. What a place to celebrate it. South Bend, Indiana. The winner of this game will play in the championship game versus the Fighting Irish, who beat Penn State earlier tonight. And off we go in overtime. Dexter Danks and the Wolverines. Slow start, but they can getting better as this game has moved on as Romeo will cover quickly 15 seconds in. Romeo understanding the bounces off this defensive zone wall behind him and has been a bit more responsible in his goal crease. But another thing worth talking about, we talked about the discipline. The other thing is the shot selection in overtime. The understanding of what is a good shot and what is a bad shot changes in overtime. Goaltender's a bit more fatigued. Also, the you just don't know factor starts to come into play. And passing up a shot is going to be a less common occurrence that puck should be heading at both of these goaltenders in any sort of questionable opportunity that a player has on the offensive side of the puck late in the game you mentioned both teams this being a single elimination game and having been off all week if they win shortening their bench will that trend continue at overtime well that's a gamble we'll see if one of the coaches is willing to take i, I would push my chips in and shorten it up and see if you just can't end this in the first 10 minutes but if all of a sudden that doesn't work and say you keep pushing for the next 10 you know you not only have tired out some of your consequential players but also you put players in a position where all of a sudden now they haven't played very much in an extended period of time their legs are cold their timing starts to diminish Matthew Weiss cleanly wins that from Cooper Marodi strong heavy stick by Lazinski the shot Matthew Weiss good night Michigan 32 seconds into overtime next stop Notre Dame an opportunity to pull two players his direction he feeds that puck across and opens up a lane and all of a sudden Matthew Weiss turns out the lights on the Wolverines great vision there by Tanner Lazinski finalist for the Big Ten player of the year showing just why he is so important to not only the Buckeyes but has been one of the most impactful players this season painful ending for Michigan and Mel Pearson waiting for the confirmation of the goal and their tournament run has ended in the semifinals This is a confident Ohio State team. The top two seeds will meet next Saturday night, 8 p.m. Eastern on BTN for a championship. State team. And also a team that's built to win in the postseason. You think about their defensively sound. They're opportunistic on the power play, which was huge tonight. 
And what else? They have a rock solid goaltender, and that's what playoff teams need to do. They have to be defensively sound. You can't guarantee that you're going to win any game, but if you're playing with fire, trying to win, you know, seven, six, five, four, much more difficult than you locking it down, having a good goaltender, and waiting for the power play opportunities to come your way. And that's what Steve Rollick has really built this team on. What a shot by Matthew Weiss. And there wasn't one instance when you saw Sean Romeo and he looked unsure of himself. And that's bled into the rest of the team. As Fred Putch is joined by the winning head coach, Steve Rollick. Well, Steve, you know how tough it is to beat a team, any team, much less Michigan, five times in one season. How did you do it tonight? Well, gutty performance. So, you know, we're a little shorthanded. Our guys dug deep, and we just beat a really good hockey team tonight. You told us earlier in the week, Matt Weiss is having his best season on and off the ice. That continued tonight. Tell us about his performance. Well, he's a big-time player, and I just told him shoot some pucks out there, and Tanner made a nice feed to him. But you know what? He does it top to bottom. Penalty kill, power play. He's had a great year. And uh, Sean Romeo certainly showed us why he's a finalist for goalie of the year, did he not? Well, he's been there all year. He's been our rock. Okay, so it's on the road next weekend to Notre Dame. Initial thoughts on a, a pretty good Irish team, I think you'd agree? Well, you know, they beat us three times this year, so we'll have our hands full, but we'll be prepared. We'll be ready to go. Thanks and congratulations. Thanks a lot. Well, Dan, there's been four different Big Ten championship teams in the first four years with Notre Dame and Ohio State playing. We're guaranteed to have a fifth different Big Ten playoff champ this year. Yeah, Fred, and it's good to have a rock back in goal like Sean Romeo helps propel Ohio State over Michigan 3-2. Michigan put up a fight, but 32 seconds into overtime, Matthew Weiss settles the score, and it sends Ohio State to that championship matchup this Saturday. Once again, our final score, Ohio State 3, Michigan 2. The Buckeyes prevail in sudden death overtime for Ben Clymer and Fred Fletch. I'm Dan Kelly. We'll see you next Saturday for the Big Ten Hockey Tournament.